Hi friends, this is Audi One, and you're watching part seven of the Secret Lab series. Firstly, I would like to thank all of you for the overwhelming response. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Vivek, a special thanks to you for your feedback on the Facebook. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Guys, let's start from where we left in lesson six. For those who are watching this for the first time, it is highly recommended that you can go back and watch lesson one to five for basics of error-based injection, lesson six for double core injections, and this is the continuity. So let's start. Let's go back and start our MySQL prompt, mysql-u root hyphen p tour and let's use our database that is security let's open up the file that we created in lesson six just refreshing what we did first we took a core query select database for example and then we created a double query, select and select the database. Now, we used count function, we used a random function, floor function and group by clause to produce an error. An error that was produced at runtime. Logically or syntactically, the query was intact and it was accepted by the compiler, the MySQL compiler. And then when it rendered it, on the basis of how MySQL works, it threw an error. And with the error, it dumped us the core part, the sub query that we had inside. Let's do an example. And let's refresh ourselves. So it dumps the database security. Same way we mentioned that by changing the core query to something like select table name from information schema dot tables, where table schema equals database limit zero one. And then iterating over limit, we can dump various tables. Same way changing it to column names, we can dump various columns and so forth. Now let's continue and try to just extract this information through the front interface. That's the website. Let's copy one of the basic queries. Let's start with the database and let's paste it here because we'll be using the front end so we don't need the semicolon at the end and i'm enclosing everything in the parenthesis and i'm i'll be doing everything in the notepad and then copy pasting the same on the front end for easy understanding let's copy this And let's open it up, provide it an ID equals one. Let's break the query. We figure out that quotes breaks the query and it has a single quotes around the string. Let's check it one more time. So we have a single quote, let's put it and let's comment the rest of the query by use by using comments. Now, as we discussed earlier, whatever we inject between the left side, that is one quotes and the right side, that is the comments, anything we put in will be executed. 
so let's use a and and let's paste and let's see and we get an error message operand should contain one columns because and is ex expecting only one input but here we are providing one is count that is one row or one column sorry and other one is the concat thing that we nicknamed or aliased as a so let's fix this up let's fix it back here select one from so what we are doing here we are just using this part of the query as a derived table and again this being injected into the and function let's not forget to put the parenthesis across let's copy it out and paste it here If you see this error, that means that we have an issue with the query, with the we forgot the and and we receive an error. Every derived table must have its own alias. That means that this is the derived table that we are using because the general syntax is select one from some table so we are using this as a derived table so we have to give it a nick an alias we can give it anything of our choice we can just call it b just for the sake of simplicity and let's put it here as well And we receive the error sub query returns more than one row if you remember when we were doing this in the previous video we were sometimes receiving a response rather than receiving the error message And we get the error message finally it says duplicate entry security the same error message that we were witnessing in the mysql prompt let's change the basic query and let's uh, use current underscore user So we get the current user. Let's use version. And we get the version. We can also dump the tables complete. Let me just copy this out. And we get a message emails as the table name let's iterate over the limit function
and we get the reference let's do it more same way by changing the query in between we can dump the columns and we can dump the complete database users let me show you another example rather than using floor function we can also use the round function as I mentioned to you so this time I just mentioned to the round round function that I just need one decimal place so we say round function the random value and round it to just one decimal place so we get 1.3 let's try to dump some more things rather than saying table name we can say column name also column name from information schema dot columns where table underscore name equals users did you notice what happened here instead of throwing an error it just said you are in actually whenever the query worked we are supposed to get a message you are in this is what we observed during the enumeration phase of this page if you closely watch here we have limit 3 comma 1 that means we are looking at the fourth item and if we recall from the memory our users table has only three columns so the fourth column does not exist if I change it to zero we get we get our first column let's go and change it and so forth the remaining you can try and enumerate same way you can also try the lesson 6 of the labs because lesson 6 is also not different it's again the same thing but how the query breaks is different same as lesson 1 to 4 lesson 1 was single quotes that we practiced on lesson 2 was integer based so how you go about it lesson 3 was single quotes with a twist we saw and lesson 4 again has some twist so those lessons are being prepared for your practice so with this we come to end of double query injection in the coming videos I will be discussing 
blind injections starting with the boolean based blind and then continuing forward to time based blind and thereafter we will be using the out file once we are done with this then we will move to the next category of post based injections and so forth thank you guys very much for watching see you next time bye bye